Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel for Keeping It Real with Katie, the podcast in which we discuss celebrity news and YouTube news. And today we're going to be talking about Michael Jackson yet again. So if I sound really somber and sad, it's because this topic really does make me very sad to talk about because of what this man went through. And you guys know my overall consensus and my conclusion on this whole topic. You guys know that I believe that he is innocent and I will always stick with that. And I just also want to say a quick little disclaimer. I am not here to sway any sort of opinion of any of you. Believe what you want. I can't flip the switch and I can't say to you, believe he's innocent because you're going to believe whatever the hell you want to believe. So in no way, shape or form am I trying to shove a narrative down your throat. But I said, and I promised that if something came out on Michael Jackson in the next coming weeks that I would cover it. And here I am. Of course, in mainstream media, it wasn't covered. There was a documentary recently that was released on the 9th of August. And it was a documentary that vindicated his innocence one more time. And it had his friend Mark Luster. It had his daughter, aka his goddaughter. It had his bodyguard there. It had his friends there who worked very closely with Michael, especially the bodyguard, who was there during the 2005 cases, who was there during the 1993 cases. These are credible, credible sources because they were there. They witnessed Michael's demise, sad to say, but they did. I just want to quickly review the documentary. It's called chasing the truth and i'll link it down below if you guys want to watch it it's a very good documentary it's well-rounded it shows the evidence that we already know and i wanted to see what these people had to say and what their encounters were because their encounters matter in this case in this documentary if you are going to make a documentary about somebody that you are alleging is a child molester then you better get two sides to every story and leaving neverland didn't have that so the main catalyst of this documentary was to give that other side there was even a journalist that was there. A journalist that studied Michael Jackson's career, wrote a book about it, and believes him. And he's a journalist. And most journalists want to write what sells. He's not one of those. He didn't know Michael personally, but he knew well enough that the U.S. media, American media, just wants to feed into the narrative that he is a child molester without any research involved. So my overall consensus of this documentary is how well put together this was because it showed a accurate representation of the cases. It showed Tom Mesereau's statement. It showed Michael Jackson's statement. It showed Wade Robson's statement. His defense. In his defense, he was the star witness of the 2005 trial. And I've said that multiple times. But he was. People don't want to see that. 
we're so into cancel culture now that we can't even look at the other side. That would be like me accusing you of child molestation and I have no idea who you are. I don't know what you've done in your lifetime. You could be the best person going. But you would want to fight this if someone called you this. You would want to say it's not true. You would do anything to vindicate your innocence. So why the hell is Michael Jackson any fucking different from any person walking this earth? And the sad part of it is, Michael Jackson is no longer here. So if the fans don't do it, if the fans don't vindicate for him, it's sad to say, but no one will. So if you are conflicted on what your thoughts are on Leaving Neverland, watch this documentary. I'll link it down below. It's an overall consensus of how he was feeling during the time. Accurate representation of the cases. It showed real footage of the vindication and the lawyers and the depositions and all of those things. So none of this was plotted in any such way. You could look it up. The vindication video and the lawyer's statement and Michael Jackson's statement, it's all there. So if you are even doubting this documentary, it's all there. You can look it up for yourself. But yeah, my overall consensus is Michael Jackson is innocent and I will always stand by that. And no one will take that away from me. No one will cancel me. Even though we come from a cancel culture nowadays. I don't care if you do cancel me. I stick by what I believe in. And Michael Jackson is innocent. I've stated this multiple times I've given evidence on my previous podcast if you guys want to watch that I'll link that down below there's nothing more I can say other than this documentary is worth a watch and worth your time and just take into consideration the inconsistencies of their stories and how many times they've changed their stories over the years if Michael Jackson was still living they would be kissing his ass, quite literally. And they would want to be his best friend. Wade Robson, in particular, has done everything and anything to keep his name associated with Michael Jackson because that's the only thing that he can do to stay relevant. If you are conflicted, watch this documentary. I'll link it down below. I will never stop defending Michael Jackson, and it's not because I'm blinded by my fandom. It's because I've done my research and I know the truth. And the truth is there. It's just what you do with it that matters. I love you guys. I'll see you all next time.